It's October 18th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined at length. Episode number 574. And thank God I double-checked the date so I could get it right. Yay. Yeah. Good for you. Did not rely on the thing. Oh, it's also and, it's it's correct here, just not up here. And anyways, doesn't matter. Anyway, but and Gary's the intro. <laughs> Gary's just like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Gary has a new intro. So cute. Do you want to hear that intro again? Let's hear that yeah. intro again. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And doesn't this sound very appropriate for for Gary? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it's one of those times again. Uh, let's talk about eat it, eat it. food. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's that spoopy time of year. Spoopy. Uh, so this is uh, the let's talk about food spoopy edition. Gary, what do you mean by that? Uh. Well, first, we might have to educate our audience about Spoopy. I think uh, we should. Cause... Because I had to educate two of my besties just last night about it on ah. Messenger. Um, I made some comment about it, something being Spoopy. And the response kind of <laughs> gave me an impression. They didn't understand why I said that. And I was like, and oh, because <laughs> someone, I'm going to leave them nameless, said, if that's what the kids say these days or something. And I was like. Do we not know what Spoopy is? And then (laughs) they and the other person in the chat said, no, I do not know what it is. So I gave them an internet link real quick um, so they could get educated because I didn't know until earlier this year myself. So there you go. It was that through the the entourage chat? No, no, no. This was a messenger. Um, That, that, That you learned about it. That you learned about it. Uh no, I've seen I know it came up in, it in referenced the I think on Twitter. Yeah, I I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen it. Thank you, Entourage Chat, because it's very much a thing. And um, I, I don't remember when I first saw it. I might have been Facebook. I I think for me it was the Entourage Chat. Ah, nice. Oh. But Gary, I I instantly knew what it meant, but you know. Anyways, Gary, you what said you had a definition. What do you mean? Hang on. Is this okay. is, is this a, another Urban Dictionary with Gary? No, oh. uh, not specifically. Oh, okay. Well, let's still so... do this. <laughs> it's definitions with Gary. All right. So, the origins of spoopy. That's S P O O P Y. Uh, are because uh, it's the internet's favorite Halloween word. Apparently, this is an article from back in 2017. Oh so my! Been around for a while. Uh huh. Um, it was a message in bones on a dark canvas, um, and so apparently a Ross's department store um, actually made a sign that had "spooky" misspelled, mm. and there was two P's instead of a P. And a K, and there's a. I, I put the link in the uh, our thing, so when you go to uh, our website, you can check it out. Um, if someone can throw it into the live chat, as well. Um, so there's an actual image of what this side looked like, and it's cute, but it's kind of funny because it's, um, you know, uh, this thing, and it goes on to say it was 2009, and a Flickr user uploaded an image of the humorously wrong sign on the site. And there it stayed for two years until a Tumblr user also found it and photographed the sign. Over the next year, um, it supposedly became a sensation. But if that's the case, it means it's been around for like 11 years, but it's really kind of taken off in the past couple of years, I would say. Mm. And it goes on quite a bit. See, I kind of picked up on what it was just because it was that time of year. And uh, it sounded kind of like, it seemed more like a, a... Either a like spooky Snoopy sort of thing, or 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 
in any case, there was spooky was related to it, considering most of the word is spooky. It's just a P instead of a K. Right. So uh, I picked up on it. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cute. Right. And in that article, it does go on to say that Urban Dictionary um, had a simpler definition dating back to 2012, simply saying something that is funny and spooky at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just think it's become the pumpkin spice latte of Halloween vocabulary. So that's fair enough. It's all life. <laughs> uh, yeah. So comical things that that go with that so that being said we have our let's talk about food series um we have many times uh several times talked about candies our preferences of candies we've done candy comparison stuff but i didn't want to quite talk about that even though halloween is uh as of this recording just 12 days away uh but or 13 12 13 somewhere there um math is hard. i just thought we would talk about like what we think of when it comes to halloween haunt season and the food that we associate with that. I mean, I think mm. it's a given that there's Halloween candy. We can talk a little bit about that, but I think there's... How many people actually get that reference? Um, if you're gay... No, 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 uh, no. It's not just gay. Uh-oh. Garfield. Oh. Oh, and the see, Halloween was... special. That's right. I was attributing that to because I was about to quote the following, which is I thought I thought yours came from the same movie, which is running a buck, running a buck, running a buck, running a buck. But uh, was, uh, 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 hocus pocus. Yes. No, no, the Garf. I, I'm doing Garfield the uh, Halloween special where he goes candy, 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 candy. So well, that just goes to show, like at this time of year, you know, there mm -hmm. are. Lots of different cultural things that come up, you know, um, in the form of like entertainment and that kind of stuff. It's a great um, pumpkin, and, Charlie Brown. Right. So with that comes food. For example, uh, it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Infamously has bobbing for apples in one scene. Yep. Yeah. Um, popcorn balls, I believe, mm -hmm. are handed out as treats um, at some yeah. point to the children. Uh, then obviously, like, you know, yeah. like regular candy, that kind of stuff. Can you so, tell that was made before the uh, whole uh, needle in the candy scare? Yeah, um, yeah. Crap. Well, I mean, the, the it's the Great Pumpkin Hall Halloween, or it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown has probably been around 50-ish years, if I'm not mistaken, 40, uh, 50 years. Yeah, I think it was the 70s like or 80s that it came out. Now you're going to make me look it up. Check it out. Yes, you hate That's what I was doing. It's <laughs> the great pumpkin trailer, man. All right. Lloyd, while they're 1966. Doing, uh, six. See, I told you. All right. Great. Point to Damon. Um, so <laughs> for, for, for Lloyd in the chat, because you had made the comment um, being from Ghana, I'd be curious to know, like, anybody who's watching us live, like, what your uh, referential background is about, like, haunt halloween season uh stuff with like movies and entertainment but yeah um yeah so uh like my big thing and we've kind of talked about this a little bit before when it comes to this time of year um apple cider mm -hmm. uh, specifically is a thing we have uh, a cider mill here well we have a company slash what was a store it's now joined with a distillery but anyways um they uh was a it was a local family when i was growing up as a kid they are known for making um cider that's really popular um i love yeah. getting a cider slushy at this time of year mm. um it can be non-alcoholic but of course now that they've joined with a <laughs> distillery it's pretty much yeah. booze 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 it's always and they talk thing. about cider it's a different type of cider than you knew as a kid well right i mean you know it, it can be it can have things added to it um mm -hmm. so but that's what kind of one of the things um, I think, Jeff, we've kind of talked a little bit before about, like, stews and soup. Um, oh, or stoops. Uh, <laughs> stoops. You know, are probably coming more into the frame at this time of year. Yeah. For, That's uh, the thing I'm remembering the most as well. Like, this is usually the time of year where um, my, my mom would usually, like, start making, like, beef stew pretty regularly. 
I mean, this is, yeah, it's usually because because the temperature is going down. Yeah, because it's it's colder, so you want Except here in Texas, but... Except here in Texas, Yeah, I mean, not in Texas, yeah, but, you know... I still, I'm still using my air conditioning. (laughs) Yeah, we heard. (laughs) (laughs) Eddie, be here for the free show. That's not saying, that's the... (laughs) But yeah, so, like, that was... That I I know I remember correctly. Like 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 stews and soups was like the big thing like right around this time. And this was is also kind of um, fall. You know, waiting around because it's it's starting to get cooler during the you know day. So I remember um, the I know this is one of Jeff's favorite meals, but like the grilled cheese and tomato soup. This was around the time that that would start showing up for me when I was growing up. Is like the Campbell's tomato soup and like a grilled cheese sandwich, not really a grilled cheese sandwich, because I would make it myself. So it was literally so. Yeah, for those that don't, if you were a kid, like your grilled cheese sandwich, you didn't put in like you didn't like toast on the stove or anything like that. No, grilled cheese sandwiches for me growing up was you threw two slices of bread in the toaster, and then when they came out while they were still hot, hot. Um, you threw like a piece of cheese and you put them together. So you had a and... toasted cheese sandwich. Yeah, basically. Not mm. the grilled cheese, but that's what we called grilled cheese. That's what, that was our grilled cheese, you know, growing up, you know, cause you, you made it yourself. Right. It wasn't like, now you know, let, let, let me back you up a little bit, just a little bit <laughs> to, to show our a, a slight differences between our growing up mm-hmm. because I'm, when I had a grilled cheese sandwich, I had a grilled cheese sandwich. My mama showed me how to properly make and handle a grill, an actual grilled cheese sandwich. I I've been known to to have four grilled cheese sandwiches made at the exact same time when I was a kid. Now, all of them were using doing Kraft American singles. Yeah, this is before I grew That's up and I- been like, no, this is much better if you have 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 pepper jack like, and cheddar like and munster and yeah, <laughs> like actual cheese as opposed to the pasteurized processed cheese stuff. Hey, hey, uh, hey, hey! That uh, uh, oh, like, oh, let's Gary? let's not be dogging oh. on pasteurized oh. cheese product. It it has a place. Mm-hmm. It, it it can does. be really useful in mm-hmm. like when you want a nice creamy melty consistency to something uh i will say that it can make a nice uh grilled cheese Mm -hmm. sandwich um it also can be very advantageous in macaroni and cheese um so like there's a there's a time and a place um Uh i i will say this uh for a product that is not cheese it's hella expensive (laughs) it's a cheese product which means there is cheese to it it's just because of all the manufacturing it's kind of separated from just regular cheese <laughs> so you've got cheese you got cheese product there is some relation because there's cheese in the cheese product it's just because of everything else it's definitely not regular cheese that's why it has to be called cheese product I well love it, Lloyd. that should be illegal yes uh, by the way by the way t- making like a I, he's talking about cheese stuff uh, <laughs> When 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 you make make um, I hope I believe anyway. uh, queso dip like 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 superb owl uh, 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 f- famous chip dip, um, you're gonna use a big old block of Velveeta. True. You know because this thing melts and liquefies so much better than if you just use regular cheese. That True. that shit. Is hard to do. You would have to like be able to make a roux. You kind of have to temper the cheese in a weird way. You have to make a roux, make it a roux, which is like one of the hardest things in all the world. At least for me, it's, some people probably are so used to it they can do it do it with the with like nothing. But for me, make it a roux, super hard to do. Right. Uh, and, and to make sure that it thickens, but then you have to make sure that it's thing. And basically, if you do do that manually. You're basically making Velveeta. <laughs> well, probably a much uh, better product than Velveeta. <laughs> right, Velveeta but still, in of itself, that's why it's called a cheese product. It, it's mm. it's 
technically it's a pasteurized cheese product but the the thing is it's a whole other category like technically Belvita has cheese culture in it it's mm. like one of the last ingredients that's listed so that's why i'm kind of like you know for something that isn't cheese it's still yeah, cheese expensive thing. um because I'm old enough to remember growing up that we would we we as a family did not, um, but I knew I heard about in individuals talking about government cheese, like mm -hmm. that you would if you were on food stamps um, or had assistance of some kind that you may get a block o cheese. Um, and my father has actually gotten it, um, being you know a senior who has had mm -hmm. you know stuff uh, provided, and usually um, you find that it might be like with you know a food bank of some kind yeah, yeah. and he loves that stuff um and you know but i'm yeah. like you know there sure it doesn't may not cost anything quote unquote because it's coming through a program but if you go into the store whether you want to buy the brand name or the generic like i'm like damn like <laughs> i think i'll make something cheap <laughs> yeah and i used to love 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 like the queso dip like our it was well i guess it was technically queso dip because it was um you would have it would have like um it wasn't chorizo this is like back in the day it was like the velveta and then like either hot sausage or or mild sausage and maybe um i guess it's the rotel tomatoes or something along yeah. those lines to kind of make it like that so yeah with tomatoes and with chili peppers love it with chili. love it because it was it because like you said like velveta melts like it's perfect and then when it it, does, it takes a little while because it's fake cheese um, it takes a while for it to like solidify again you, you would like, have to actually have it put it into while. a fridge to in order to solidify it yeah <laughs> and yeah. even uh, then it's going to take a while for it to completely solidify in like, that I, case if you want it faster you're going to have to put it in the freezer <laughs> Yeah, but like my favorite, like my favorite thing was that, like put it like the thing for us, like at school was like the crock pot, like you throw it all in the crock pot, let it, you know, sim you know, melt and simmer and cook. And then you had this like awesome, like sausage, like queso dip mm -hmm. for like any kind of fundraiser function, what have you. And because it was, you could have it on simmer or low in the crock pot. It, it was always like that warm, like melty, you know, texture that is just like perfect for that kind of dip. So, so again, pasteurized cheese product has a place mm -hmm. in food. Yes. Grilled cheese sandwiches depends. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Um, but I, yeah. I will tell you, when I had a grilled cheese sandwich, I had a grilled cheese sandwich. I didn't have a toasted cheese sandwich, even though there was a while that, there that we did call it a toasted cheese sandwich, but it was really a grilled cheese sandwich. And as Elton Brown has said, technically they're not even grilled cheese sandwiches because they're not done in the grill and the cheese is not grilled. Yeah, they're technically griddled. Uh, <laughs> they're griddled. They're <laughs> yeah, they're grilled anyway. cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know that was you know growing up, and then you know obviously I grew up, and I know how to make a I know I know how to make a proper grilled cheese sandwich. Thank you very much. Um, you laugh. <laughs> Stop laughing. Uh oh. <laughs> Does your partner have a bag of differ on that, or? I believe so. I, I believe so. He is laughing at me. All right, how 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 do you make how do you? Hold on. What are you right. saying, sweetie? Oh, he knows what he wants for lunch tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we heard. Okay. We're not um, gonna. We're not gonna. We're so, not gonna go into that anyway. So, should we, should we take a moment to talk about how each of us make grilled cheese sandwiches? No, because let's talk about. Or did we already do that? Anyways, moving on. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, let's move on. All right. Fall foods. Fall foods. Uh, our Halloween haunt type foods. I mean, uh, a lot of it, you, you might even say, like, pumpkin-ish sort of things. The only thing is, whenever I think of pumpkin-ish sort of things, because you think a lot of pop pumpkins around this time of year because of jack-o'-lanterns, right? Mm -hmm. But but whenever I think about, like, pumpkin-type type foods, I always think of that more of a Thanksgiving thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I... It's yeah, pumpkin pie. Both. Like, yeah, I could think of it as kind of more falling into, like, 
Thanksgiving kind of thing. But you know, pumpkin has be, is a is a fall thing. It's definitely a round this time kind of thing. Um, I know. What was it that I used to have? Oh, pumpkin seeds. Oh yeah, for like for like, like actually like toasted like pumpkin seeds. That yeah. was the one of the things that you used. My um, dad used to do um, whenever we used to when we did the jack o' lantern. We would take out the seeds. He would like take the seeds out, and then he would roast the pumpkin seeds, and we'd have them like. Um, not a personal favorite of mine, but that's just me. Yeah. It's, I'm not a seed it's, person. It's a very interesting like treat. This is me. You know, if you did them right, you could a lot. maybe do them candied, but most of the time you just kind of did them like yeah, salt it. You know, yeah. Yeah, I think those are. I, I think pumpkin seeds are. I I don't think maybe a pumpkin seed brittle. Yeah, I've seen pumpkin seed brittle as well. But Actually, I, I don't think of just um, just candied pumpkin seeds. If you're going to have pumpkin seeds not in a brittle, it it would always be just like a roasted uh or or just dried uh, enough and salted just like you would be eating peanuts. I'm pretty sure or uh yes. like some fireflies. That place that candies that Krause's chocolate place that you mm -hmm. like. I think I got brittle from there like pumpkin seed brittle from there i'm pretty sure as i look it up now <laughs> keep going keep going fall favorites halloween treats um usually when it comes to this time of year like the one thing i know that becomes popular like uh, someone i know just recently posted about uh, a chili cook-off mm -hmm. um all the different types like i've had mm -hmm. a couple of people post on their timelines that um someone i know just yesterday i think made a white bean chicken chili or was that this morning for tonight um <laughs> so like uh you know there's there's different foods i think like i definitely think like when you're talking about pumpkin so for instance i had some pumpkin muffins recently mm -hmm. um they were from the local store they were a bakery barked down I was like, okay, like I'll get them. And in my head, I'm kind of like, eh, we'll see how they are. Like I wasn't expecting a lot, but I also didn't pay full price. So I wasn't going to bitch about it if they weren't that great. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you, I was really pleasantly surprised because ingredient number two was pumpkin. Not pumpkin, pumpkin spice, spice. Right. Or like, you know, something else. It was flour, pumpkin, which mm. actual pumpkin, you know, is pretty, uh, you know, wet as an ingredient, so to speak. Mm. Mm. Um, so I was really happy that, you know, um, wow. with that. So to me, that's one of those foods that's kind of evocative at this time of year, like anything that mm. comes from harvest. Um, yeah. Pumpkin bread. Yeah. yeah. Corn. God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. Think of like a, like a sweet corn on the cob or, oh, like I, I remember you know, as a kid we would actually like go out and there would be somebody like out next to a field with a little booth, but with like bags and 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 crates just full of just essentially freshly harvested uh, uh, sweet oh corn, and that oh. that you can and they're in the husks. So when you take it home, you had to peel them, <laughs> peel off the husks, and then then even kind of rinse off because there's all the the I don't know what it's called the, the stringy stuff uh, underneath yeah, the, the silk. Uh, silk. Yeah, the silk. Yeah, yeah corn silk. Yeah, and then and then you would have this big old honking thing at the end that you kind of had to break off, so you had just the cob. Mm-hmm boil it up and then just smear it with butter and salt and pepper <laughs> okie dokie and that's a really so bad impression of somebody who, who's just like munching off corn but munching <laughs> off corn <laughs> of, on the cob was yeah it's a thing so I'm I used to I'm a little surprised. But yeah, things like soups were definitely are definitely a big thing. I'm looking and one of my favorite um I mean it is from Panera, but it's one of my favorite soups um that just literally just popped into my mind. They usually do around this time um an autumn squash soup. Mm -hmm. 
and I I love that. It's so good. A any of those hearty vegetables, the mm -hmm. the, the the gourdish, so like mm -hmm. sweet potatoes and uh, squashes and uh, pumpkin, um, uh, oh, and, and yeah. any of those like hearty vegetables, which yeah, they're considered a vegetable. But they're, but they're probably the more of something else, like not necessarily berries, but I don't know. Yeah. Different category altogether. Um, but culinarily speaking, they're treated as vegetables. Just like a tomato. Tomato is a fruit. Botanically speaking. But culinarily right. speaking is considered a vegetable. Because they work in different ways. Yeah, I will say, um, Technically, what I'm about to say is available year round, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is probably around this time of year I get more of a hankering for, or it comes onto the radar more often, and that's pot pie. Ah, mm. yes, I love pot pies. Yeah. Um, I just had uh, from, oh, hell's bells, which brand is it? It's a frozen uh, dinner line, On and I had their crustless chicken pot pie. I don't know. Uh, so it's um, well, I can't remember what the what the because they changed their their like packaging. It's a light brown. It's a bowl. Anyways, um, it'll come to me. It's it's probably like lean cuisine or Stouffer's or you know mm -hmm, those brands mm -hmm. or whatever. But anyways, um, I was intrigued by it because it's supposed to be chicken and vegetables in a like gravy broth or whatever. And what they did was is they put in bits of crust, quote unquote. Um, that are kind of like dough pieces, so it's not chicken and biscuits. It's more like chicken, chicken and, and dumplings. dumplings. No, right, but I mean, it was different. It was like it was like they'd made a pastry dough, had baked it or cooked it, and then broke it into like pieces yeah, that went into it. So different it type was of dough from, uh, it was basically everything dumpling. that is a pot pie, but in this case, um, it wasn't in a crust. I don't. It's a deconstructed it. pot pie. Uh, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. probably more accurate, but I bet that doesn't market very well. So, no, no, <laughs> as a <probably> title. Not. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it, the thing about me is that I love the Marie Calendar pot pies personally. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're, they're they, and I have gotten as a replacement some of the uh, Boston Market pot pies that you can get, which mm -hmm. is a decent replacement for when you can't get a, uh, Marie calendars, Marie but calendars. I, th I think they're the best. Um, but I, I always, whenever I, I do that, I don't eat it on a plate. I eat it from a bowl. I, I take one of my bowls. Like you I, the I, whole pot pie in a bowl? Yeah, I, I take the pot, pot pie after yeah. I, so I, you know, you cook it for the hour that it is and then uh, let it cool for at least five minutes or something like that. And then take it and I just go whoop, into a bowl. And then crunch it up. I basically make my own crustless by breaking everything <laughs> up. It just So it's just this big old mosh. But I'm also a huge fan of casseroles which is basically you take a bunch of ingredients and throw it all together into one big thing and just cook it all together. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I'm doing when, it, when I do that. I also do that with a lot of my foods like a, if I get my Bourbon Street steak from uh, uh, Applebee's, Applebee's. Uh, I'll take I'll take the uh, m the mashed potatoes, or, or first of all, I'll cut up my s steak into bits. I'll take my mashed potatoes and just toss it on and just mix the whole thing up. <laughs> so I got mm. mashed potatoes, onions, and steak all just mixed up. Uh, same thing with like a burrito bowl. Instead of having all the separate parts, I mix it all together into one big like thing. It's basically a casserole, just not the same. Mm. But anyways, hearty, th hearty things where they're gravy and and uh, yeah. hearty vegetables uh, with the, the aromatics and potatoes. I mean, potatoes is just that's, a good thing. That's, I think that that's kind of what we're kind of hitting the nail on in, in a sense is that like it's hearty. This is the time of year where you kind of think of like the big meals. I mean, I think it's like ingrained in our DNA because of the whole like this is harvest season mm -hmm. and and people wanted to like stocking you know, up, up yourself their, yeah, for stock winter. Up, like, on their, their nutrients and stuff because to last all day. So you get like these big hearty meals 
um, to kind of help, you know, with that. And um, I, I agree, like, like heartier, fuller, thicker soups and stews, big thing around this time of the year, much bigger meals. I will admit, um, as long as the p- hot pie is chicken, I'm good. Not a fan of the beef pot pie? No. Or the turkey. Or the I, turkey? My wow. mom used to, like, every once in a while, we would, you would get, like, there were, I think it was, like, Kroger, like, the, like, store brand or whatever, like, the pot pies, because mm-hmm. they were, you know, it's cheaper, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, and said banquet and, ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, not the banquet ones. Well, that, that, well that's another that's one, which is cheap. That was. Hey, 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 hey. When you po. <laughs> you could afford. I mean, true, you, true, you, true, you could true, buy true. ten for ten dollar banquet pot pies here in the US, or mm. if you're lucky, they go on sale for like eighty nine cents uh-huh. a piece or something. True. So mm. you're almost getting like true. eleven or twelve. Oh, I, were, I, I remember doing that. The I only th- used to get the... the only thing is, I, I would be making like two or three of them at a time. <laughs> we used to get the. True, they're not. I think good. it was like the store brand, if not maybe banquet. It might have been, but uh, whatever. Mm. Anyway, the cheap pot like, pies, mm. yeah, the off brand or whatever, you know. And they, every once in a while, the chicken ones were more expensive than the turkey ones. So my mom would get the turkey ones, mm. and I, I don't know why, but I abhor the taste of turkey ones. I, I can't. I cannot, in my mind, tell you right now why I don't like them, but for whatever reason, I didn't like them. <clears throat> and, and the beef one, like I could tolerate, because you know it's beef. At least it's like you know, mm-hmm. it's totally different. But like turkey and chicken, I know they're poultry and whatever. But for some reason, for me personally. I, I could not. <laughs> have you have you ever had the, the 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 like cheesy chicken and bacon Marie, Marie calendars? You should try that. Yeah. It's really good. Anyway, <laughs> so other foods I was kind of thinking about like at this time of year. I was looking at some stuff online. Goulash, oh, um, man, which some people may not be familiar with. Uh, is basically macaroni with a, a red sauce oh, yeah, yeah. and a ground beef of they, some kind. I actually um, uh, favorited a recipe and all recipes for goulash. Yeah, it's so funny. Of course, I favored a lot of things just so I ha- have quick access to them, so I can try try making them on times. Like, I don't think we ever like when growing up. We ever time. called it goulash. It was just. Well, I, I don't think, it, <laughs> like, I think there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, beefy mac. Like, that's yeah. what it was. But I don't think it's necessarily goulash. I think there there's, like, some subtle differences between the two. Let well, me I mean, up. technically, there can be. Um, you use tomato paste, beef broth, um, kind of seasoning. Usually there's cheese involved, so it's like a, like, some people might think of it as a cheesy beefy mac. Um mm-hmm. My best friend, actually, who just left uh, to go back home today, uh, she this was like the Tuesday or Thursday night weekly meal, and she never cared for it, and she absolutely finds it disgusting. So anything that kind of mimics it, she's just like, uh, no, she just that's that's a wow, hard pass. A lot. Uh, which I can understand, like that's something that happens in our lives, right? Like food has effects on us, and sometimes if you kind of are, it's forced upon you, or you know, kind of abused in a weird way, like you're just not yeah. a fan of it. Like I to this day. I'm not a fan of plain white, like fish, mm-hmm. um, like whether I'm it's broiled or sautéed or whatever. Like if it's if it's fried, that's kind of different. But like my mom went on a lot of diets when I was a kid, so like white fish was a common thing that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, and especially if like my family caught the fish when they went fishing, like you know. So invariably, it had bones in it, and I was just not a fan. Uh... Um, you know, so, uh, but t- taste can change. When I was a kid, you couldn't hardly get me to eat any vegetables. Um, you know, and now I don't, you know, try to throw up at the, you know, concept of eating. Yeah. Broccoli. So, yeah. so, uh, so just to kind of, kind of, uh, make a point on this, 
uh, goulash actually what we considered as goulash based off of my my quick little research here is not actually goulash because goulash is a soup it is uh, Hungarian it is a soup of meat and vegetables usually seasoned with paprika and other spices and I mean like a soup well we're thinking of, of, of goulash being that that macaroni thing the the quote unquote classic goulash recipe that I found in all recipes has has uh, ground beef um, uh, yellow onions garlic um, tomato uh, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, soy sauce, uh, Italian herb seasoning, uh, seasoned salt, and uh, three bay leaves and elbow macaroni, which is not a soup. <laughs> so right, I mean, what we what we think of is more like a, a hearty pasta dish. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, before I forget, I do want to say this though, and just seeing a recipe again reminds me I need to go make some um, cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> It's a and I am not talking about that stuff in a can. Sorry, kids. Um, this oh. is like made from scratch stuff. Uh, yeah, that 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 shit can be the bomb mm -hmm. um, if you if you like that kind of thing. Which, by so, the way, if if a recipe calls for a can of cre condensed cream of mushroom soup, you cannot replace that with made from scratch cream of mushroom soup. Very different texture, <laughs> and. <laughs> Does it not work because you do need that congealed uh, uh, mess of mushroom soup. I just want to say that and put that out there. There are some things that you can replace homemade for an ingredient. Like if you make homemade Sorry, mac and cheese yeah. and you're going to make a mac and cheese casserole, you can replace that mac and cheese with homemade mac and cheese, it should be just fine. Maybe a little bit better than that stovetop uh, craft thick and creamy, or or uh, as I use the AGB version, uh, because I can't get craft mac and cheese here in Texas. Apparently, uh, thick and creamy mac and cheese, I should say. Oh, it, just this type. You can get, I can get craft mac and cheese, but thick and creamy, different product. Uh, uh, but uh, the cream of mushroom soup, that same exact recipe. Have to use can Campbell's canned stuff or the non off brand if you want to. It works just fine too. <laughs> but just to say, two different products. If it's an ingredient in something, don't use regular cream and mushroom, made from scratch cream and mushroom soup to replace the non. <laughs> just saying. By the way, I apologize. Skype is having a poor connection, it's having a bad day. I don't know why. But we can hear mm. everybody, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, oh, in fact, I just had some last night. Pierogies. Oh. Yeah. Pierogies. Uh, I don't know about these. Uh, well, I, I guess. Oh, my gosh. There's different, different things which are similar items. I will not call them same. Because, like, there's... Pierogies, which are more of like Eastern European, right? Greece, yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. they're they're Polish, typically Polish, mm -hmm. so Eastern European. Um, but then there's the oh, there's the the Asian ones too. So you mean like just a place pot stickers. stickers? That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Similar items. What? But different. Yeah. A stuffed a stuffed pasta thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could you could technically say uh ravioli, pierogi, uh pot sticker. Pot sticker. If you wanted to go for a stretch, you could say like mini empanadas. Um the dough is different, but the concept is still the same. It's a it's a dough with a filling. Yeah. Um kind of a thing. No, we had we were shopping yesterday and you know, um H was like, you know, oh, look, they have, you know, a different new brand of pierogi in the freezer section. Um, so we ended up getting some and making them last night. So mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I love, I think I, pref well, I know it sounds bad. I prefer like the pot sticker, like especially like a fried, like, like, mm -hmm. like a, like the harder shelled um, pot sticker. Yeah, for sure. 
Not not to be huh. confused with uh, uh, ragoons or or yeah, some might yeah. call it uh, wontons, but yeah, yeah, that's different to me. That's totally different. A lot of those different type of wrapping. Like, very similar though you know mm -hmm. what i mean like they're they're not all that far off from each other in a way i love a good cream um, cheese ragoon oh there's a dish i haven't thought of in forever sorry <laughs> um turkey tetrazzini what not not something you're familiar with david no because <laughs> it isn't tr um, tetrazzini <laughs> is a type of pasta isn't it? uh so it's like um uh, flat spaghetti noodle. It's probably just spaghetti is that, that's in the recipe. Let me see. Oh, linguine noodle. That's what it is. I was like kind of blanking on it. Um, I found a recipe with that says a, egg noodles. Yeah, so it's linguine. Uh, I'm looking at the ingredients real quick. Uh, like chicken mm -hmm. broth, cayenne pepper, flour, whipping cream, or you could just use other cream. Uh, turkey, mushrooms. This one has pimentos in it. Interesting. Um, Parmesan cheese, some parsley, and some hot pepper flakes. So it's it's kind of like a, a turkey pasta bake, um, mm -hmm. in a way. That's yeah, that's something I haven't thought about. Uh, in the time. But this is probably America. the time of year that it would come up for me because it's you know. Allrecipes.com because oh. that's my place where I get recipes. Uh, oh. Has egg noodles, butter, sliced mushrooms, uh, cooked turkey, um, cream of celery oh. soup, sour cream, and Parmesan cheese. <gasps> Uh oh! Do you like so that gas. idea? Pot roast. <gasps> yes. Pot yes! roast. Yes. All right. I so. dare anybody, un unless they don't like beef. I dare somebody to to, to tell me they oh. don't like pot roast. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's people can... besides oh. the those who just don't like beef uh, that probably don't like it. But roast if you to. yeah, I suppose. I... I but when, love pot roast. And here's love the it, thing is, love... you can use cheap beef for pot roast. It's all about the slow cooking. Yeah. 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 All about how, like, it, it, it has gravy. to, like, cook, like, all day. Like, um, oh, man. I had a recipe for that, Like, too. my favorite, my favorite, like, like, that was my favorite meal growing up on Sundays because it's, it was literally like my mom would put it in in the morning. We would go to church and then we would come home. And then like an hour or so later, because it still had cooked, it was slow cooked. Um, we would have pot roast with like the vegetable, like with the carrots and the celery and the potatoes and just this slow cooked beef that was. Oh, so, so good. So if you wanted to go with the base model. And you want mm -hmm. it super easy, and a slow cooker is your jam, like me. And this is for for twelve servings. Uh, two cans of cream of mushroom soup, a package of dry onion soup mix, uh, one and a quarter cups of water, and five and a half pounds of pot roast meat. Mm -hmm. Pop it in a slow cooker. Cook three to four hours literally the directions for it and again that that's for simple stuff and obviously you could probably probably uh yeah. probably with a little longer throw in some carrots and potatoes in there no and probably some celery cream of mushroom. nope no cream of mushroom there is literal i forget who makes it but there is a brand that literally makes a pot roast like seasoning packet or i would be surprised if it's mccormick <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's McCormick, but it was, it's, 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 yeah, like, that's what it was. Like, you, 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 you put that with some water, like, made it into, like, a gravy. It wasn't really a gravy. It was just a water. Um, and that was what you, yeah, that's what you used. Or at least that's what my mom used. Mm -hmm. And that's McCormick. what makes, like, pot roast to me. Oh, my God, so good. So fucking good. <sighs> pot right. roast. And yeah, we have that. We get that every now. I mean, because Jim is a big fan of, of the slow cooker, um, the crock pot and everything. And like a pot roast, a, a pork roast, just like just like a slow cooked, like simmering in its own juices and some other stuff, like slow cooked, like meat, just 
Okay, so Key. McCormick. Key. McCormick. So let's say you get the package of McCormick slow cooker uh, pot roast slow cooker sauce with caramelized onion and cracked black pepper. Three pounds of boneless chuck meat trimmed. Uh, a cup and a half of cut up potatoes, a cup and a ha half of cut up carrots, and one cup of cut up onions. Place roast and vegetables in slow cooker. Stir in sauce. Mix to coat well. Cover. Cook eight hours on low or four to five in high. Yeah. So that that's probably a little bit more to your liking because it doesn't have the soup. Yeah. Locally, um, the job I had, well, two, three jobs ago that I was at, the one that I was at for a very long time, when we went into the building, there's a local uh, I mean, deli slash catering type company, and they had a beef pot roast at this time of year that they would put on like every Wednesday mm. as a as a uh, lunch special and oh, oh my god. Oh my god. That's like what and I'm I thinking yeah. about now. So yeah, like I can't it's like, it's it, yeah. and it's like, really it's like the the because you're cooking like the vegetables and the 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 pot the uh meat all together with seasonings, everything mixes and makes a savory savory delightful melding of flavors mm -hmm. i just like my mouth is watering right now uh like, just and, and, about and, it. and 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 don't get me wrong like if you want like a, a an, an awful substitute like go to like um your grocery freezer and get like the marie calendar even a marie calendar no offense love her but still mm, like right. It is not the same. Marie Callender, like go to Bob Evans or whatever and get their like slow, like, no, it's it's not the same. I don't know why, but like, it just, that melding, like you said, G G Jeff, of like this, like all the flavors kind of melding together in this slow melting pot of, of savory deliciousness is is what it is for me i have i have i have come close to having like the one from you know growing up again you know i've come close to it but it's not it's never quite the same but that's fine it's you know no one makes cooking like your mom <laughs> i mean and it, there's know. there's always the good eats version of pot roast too Anywho, which includes dark raisins. So I don't know what you think about raisins, but there is that is in there. Have no, no. <laughs> Why the fuck are we putting raisins in shit? <laughs> I mean, you probably could leave it out. It's and and honestly, I think the 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 reason for the raisins is more of to add a flavor than it is for you to necessarily eat the raisins <laughs> it's a it's to provide so, maybe a little bit of the so, sweetness so, so so remind me again what is raisin flavor delicious okay look to, to to be fair my favorite my favorite cookie is is oatmeal raisin cookies that's fair. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm also a huge fan of chocolate, chocolate peanut butter chip and cookies. Like a cookie are, are on an oatmeal are, you know, eaten out of the box. I, no, not in some fucking pot roast. No, no. Oh, yeah, I can see it. I mean, it's, it's a half a cup in your meat. You've got all this other flavors of cu uh, cumin, the salt, the beef, mm -mm. vegetables, uh, well, onion, garlic, tomato juice. Balsamic okay, goody. There's you all this failed. other thing. This adds a little bit of sweetness. Failed. But if anything, Failed. you probably could just leave it out. Fail. Cocktail, uh, a cocktail <laughs> olive stew. Good eats fail. <laughs> Sun dried tangy anyway. uh, for a raisin flavor. Anyways, <laughs> pot roast. Whew. Okay, enough about pot roast, shall we? Moving on. Anything else? Well, what um, I have to mention, yeah. No, what? Uh, Sorry. Um, well, like you know, specifically Halloween, kind of that kind of fall kind of flavor. We we were talking about apples earlier, and none of us brought up like caramel apples are are candy, candy apples. apples. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, and they have a mixed thing. It's also known as the teeth destroyers. Yeah. I mean, I don't eat them <laughs> like ever because <laughs> because um, that was like the big thing. Like sweet. Yeah, sweet. They're, they're, they're great like to look at and you can get them and they're really awesome looking. But like the minute you bite them, like bye bye. It's it's a dentist dream food. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, I mean that's kind of why I was like, mm, I don't <laughs> you can't want to bring them up. <laughs> like, well, no, it's just I'm. They're not something that I go to. Like, one of the <laughs> things that surprises me is how they're like a, like a fair festival food mm-hmm. or like a, an amusement park kind of thing. Like, you know, it's like you go past the shop that has the cotton candy and mm-hmm. and there's usually candied apples or you know um, dipped apples. Now I will say this, and I don't remember who the company is. Shit. Um, I'll have to look them up. There's a company that makes astounding dipped apples with different um, coatings and uh, items on them. Oh, Mm -hmm. Mrs. Prindles. That's it. Oh. Um, You want to talk about some gourmet ass shit. Like this is the the dealio. Um, This is not an endorsement. Uh, They are not a sponsor. But I will say um, that they make some pretty amazing stuff. I've had oh, some there. Oh, good lord. Or... <laughs> Uh-oh. So now David, I've lost David. He's, he's found the... What the hell is this shit? Oh, my. It's like the um, Sherry's Berries with the, like, dipped stra- 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 strawberries. Yes, yes. Oh! Yeah. That's some shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, I misheard you because uh, I thought you said Prindles, kind of like Pringles without the G. But no, it's Prindables. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I might have mispronounced it. Um, yeah. I was trying to read it quickly, but they have a couple different flavors. So, example, there's a pumpkin spice, triple chocolate, toffee walnut, milk chocolate, walnut pecan, dark chocolate cashew milk chocolate delight, chocolate peanut butter, almond, or there's also one called a trick-or-treat uh, candy apple, which is um, caramel rolled in a mix of crushed peanut butter candies, chewy candy corn, crispy chocolate, then dipped in a creamy chocolate, finished with a sprinkling of orange pumpkin sprinkles topped with an orange bow. ta Wow. <laughs> Serve six to eight people. <laughs> 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 For this big-ass jumbo, like, apple thing. Yeah, so... Wow. Very expensive. Um, oh, well, yeah. Well, they, they, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's basically like fancy chocolate, you know, with like an apple. So right. it's not going to be. But it's healthy. Um, okay, honey. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I don't, um, uh, like I don't like I don't like candied apples or caramel apples. I don't. If you like have gotten it and have like cut it up, like I'll take a slice of stuff like that, but I'm never gonna eat it off the stick. Mm. Like that's just me. Like uh, I won't. Ever... I think it's one of those things where when you think about it in the end, it's 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 probably meant to be something where the only reason there's a stick there is for dipping. And then yeah. it's a handle to like place it, and then it's better to just like cut it up and eat yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I would probably. Although have... nobody, nobody, especially when I was a kid, did that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, what, uh, it was. It was like a lollipop. Yeah, you never did it when you were a kid, you know, because it's all about the instant gratification for children, right? So like, <clears throat> but for me now, like, no, I, I couldn't. Like, so, I, I, you... I have. I'd be too worried about. I want to keep my incisors. Like exactly. I want, I want my. I want my teeth in the front. I want my front teeth. I would like to keep my front teeth, please. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is my teeth, front teeth. I don't want to keep yeah. those through from Halloween. Yeah. Um. So true. Should we talk about candy? We, we can. can talk about, Let's it talk about candy. Yeah. Uh, I, I found a link here. Um, oh. Uh, it, it was actually I found I found the link from a search that I did, which went to a story, which linked to this place, which apparently candystore.com keeps a 
interactive map of the most popular Halloween candy by state. Mm -hmm. um, because they do bulk candy shipments. Mm -hmm. So they collect a lot of data about who's buying what or, or what's been ordered mm. to, to, to go to different states. Uh, I believe they actually um, try to get some data from other companies um, uh, just to, to be like, okay, let's see if we can like get an idea just overall what this, this looks like. This is kind of a cool. And they've thing. got, they've got an interactive map and I like how they, they say, and we present it to you in an, uh, the above retro 1980s sci-fi interactive map. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally true <laughs> in how it looks. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to actually put this in the, uh, the, the, the live chat here uh, so people can look. And it's kind of interesting when you when you hover over a state, it will tell you what that current, what our current year's winner uh, which is this is updated for 2020 mm -hmm. so it's saying what the, what they found uh this year and when you hover over it will say show you the winner the the most popular in the state as well as the second and third places so like here <laughs> in my um adopted home state of texas we have the number one is starburst uh followed by number two reese's cups um, which was considered last year's winner. And I'm not sure if they include like the specialty ones, like the, the, the Reese's cup pumpkins, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which honestly, any of those things, the eggs and the pumpkins, those have more peanut butter than the regular peanut butter cups. But that's beside the point. Uh, third place is sour patch kids for here. My home state of Minnesota has, uh, Skittles is number one, followed by Tootsie Pops and Candy Corn. Why Candy Corn is even on this list, I have no idea, is the worst candy out there, in my humble opinion. Well, uh, I can it's see... funny that you mention that, because literally North Dakota and Michigan, their top candy is Candy Corn, as well as Alabama. Who else? Who else? Who else needs to be thrown away? <laughs> um, Mississippi! Mississippi, I am so proud of them. Mississippi, <laughs> with 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 their number one being Three Musketeers, that's one of my favorite my favorite candy mm -hmm. bars. Is Three Musketeers? I just like the, this is the actually just a really chocolate fun thing. So it's a really fun list. Go ahead. Mississippi mm. this year, their winner is Three Musketeers. Last year was Snickers, and then in third place this year is Butterfinger. Y'all in Mississippi like candy bars. <laughs> yeah. End of story. Like. We're not dealing with these little individually wrapped candy bullshit. Nuh uh we're doing we're dealing with bars, and that's like, yeah. So I I very much. Appreciate I mean, that. It, this could be counting like the fun size ones, not not the full size size yeah, bars necessarily. But but enough in any fun case. sizes make a whole candy bar, and I enough mean, of them make a king size. It don't matter. <laughs> look, look at Pennsylvania; they like the Hershey's mini mini bars. Hey, I I got. But they're no followed by Skittles and and M Ms. I know, but well, that's because we're you know a nice mix of things. I I have no problem with the the mini bars. Um, my preference, especially because it shows in the picture, I will go for the Mister Good bar and the Crackle, predominantly as my first picks because it's chocolate with something in it. Because that's my mm -hmm. thing. I'm just not a fan of plain just chocolate. chocolate. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I prefer I prefer uh, the special dark personally. So, but I also am a fan of dark chocolate. Uh, meanwhile. Or your next door neighbor in Damon's uh, state of Ohio. Uh, <laughs> you guys like blow pops, apparently. Uh, M and M's were the last year's winner, and uh, and currently are second place, followed by Starburst. And yeah. uh, and it's funny, and I don't, I don't, I don't get this. Or whatever. <laughs> no, so I, you know, I'm from Kentucky. Um, yeah. I, so, I, I, was just, I was just about to go there. Yeah, Swedish fish. Is the winner in Kentucky? Followed by Reese's peanut butter okay. cups and hot tamales. Um, you you um, like your gummies? I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you would think, being like, Swedish I, fish, that Minnesota would would like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like if I'm gonna have like a chewy gummy candy, like give me like Sour Patch Kids or 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 um. Starburst, 
while I like Swedish fish, don't get me wrong, Swedish fish are okay, but I like a variety of flavor in my, you know, gummy candy candy. So um, the same flavor in a Swedish fish every time, eh, it's okay. <laughs> oh gosh, oh funny. You but I do. I really rebel. admit I do really like this map. I think uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I like that they they did the retro sci-fi nineteen eighties. I it. love so in the week. Oh, I haven't had those in a long time. Louisiana. So Louisiana is yeah, le lemon heads. I have lemon not head. had lemon heads in gosh years. See, I I prefer like. I don't like lemon heads because they've got the candy coating mm. and I prefer the more of the crystallized, um, uh, just, just the lemon drops, mm. mm -hmm. like the generic That's fair. lemon drops. So, That's fair. so I don't really like lemon heads because of that. Uh, apparently Oklahoma likes their gum with double bubble, mm -hmm. uh, Snickers and, uh, Skittle followed by Snickers and Skittles or Skittles and Snickers. So weird. I think it's very interesting just the thing that are good. Like, why does Arizona like hot tamales? They're already hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, why well, does just why it. does Probably hot food come spicy. from? Yeah, because I know it, it's, it's spicy. I get it. I get it. I mean, I mean it, there's a thing where it's like one of the reasons why you stay uh, how you stay cool and how uh, peppers and such uh, or or chilies, I should say, uh, are so popular in in the uh, Latin American companies or, or companies, countries and mm -hmm. uh, Mexico um, is because they cause you to sweat and the sweat keeps you cool. Sticky and gross, but uh, uh, because of the during the evaporation it takes off heat from your body, which kind of keeps you cool, cooled down. So that's, that's where the heat comes from. So that's that may be why. They like those. Apparently, New Mexico had candy corn as last year's winner, but this year it's Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers are always a good, also a good one. I, I kind of like the hard candies that it's pretty much you just pop in your mouth and kind of suck on them. <laughs> uh, I do that a lot with Starburst. Yeah, like, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, but you know, I, 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 I chew them a little bit, but most yeah. of the time I'll just pop them in my mouth and kind of suck on them for a while and then. June to which is funny because I don't particularly care for suckers. I do like, like I, I like I like like again, like I would do that, like you said, I'll do that with like uh um like a Starburst or or a Skittle or what have you, like suck on them for a little bit before I like chew them down. But suckers not my thing anymore. Like growing up, yeah, big thing, because it's it's a candy that lasts a little bit longer. But like but beforehand like the fact that blow pops are the thing here in Ohio, I'm like, okay. Maybe when I was in middle school, like that was like a big thing. I remember that being a big thing because um, we used to have a um, middle school. We had a candy cart that would you know travel from um, room to room every once in a while, and you could spend like it was usually raising money for like the pep squad or whatever, and you could like buy little things like. Um, Blue Pops and Jolly Ranchers and all those stuff, you know. Yeah. If I, if I was to move to a state which uh, whose uh, current favorite candy is uh, <laughs> is uh, the, the top one based off of candy, uh, I would either move to Mississippi, Alaska, or uh, where is it? Rhode Island. Uh, mainly because uh, some of my favorite candy bars are Three Musketeers and Twix. Uh, I'd probably opt for either Rhode Island or Alaska because I prefer the cold. I know I'm kind of weird like that, but okay, Rhode Island, where are you at? It's it's right next to, to Massachusetts and Connecticut. I I get that, I know that, but for some reason <laughs> it is not showing up on my. There it goes. Good God. Yeah, it's... it's well, Rhode it's Island tiny, is tiny. <laughs> tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. So, so there's a, would, a neat little thing. 
I wouldn't move that far. I wouldn't have to move that far to get to my favorite candy. One of my favorite candies, anyway. Where, where would uh, you be moving to? Um, Illinois, because my one of my favorite candies is um, Sour Patch Kids. Really? I love Sour Patch Kids. Uh. <laughs> you don't like I mean, sour candy, though, Carrie. You've mentioned well, that before. I mean, I I don't mind sour foods, but I like sour like vinegar, not not like citric acid, like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of sour. Well, so, I mean, I, mean I, I don't dislike it. It's just not my go-to. Like I, like if Dave and I went trick or treating together and we got a bunch of candy and there was like a bunch of like sour type, you know, jelly candy stuff, I'd be giving it all to David. I'd be like, girl, you can have all of it. Also two states over and semi closer would be New York also has sour patch kids. It's true. Uh, so you, you would have uh, another option as well as if you want to uh, go a little bit further, you can go to Nebraska. True. I could also probably go to like, um, um, oh gosh, I would also maybe go um, Virginia for um, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups because that's my other one. No, uh, that's North Carolina. <laughs> Virginia is Oh Snickers. shit, son of a bitch. Every time. Uh, or anyway, Kansas. maps. United States. Um, I do know where states are, everybody. <laughs> Just not paying attention. Uh, how about you, Gary? What, what what state would you be moving to, or would you be uh, safely sound in Pennsylvania? Um, well, see, I'm down with my own state. Like, I'm fine with Hershey Mini Bars. I like Skittles. I'm good with M&Ms. Not plain. Um, so... You know, like, I mean, Those peanut butter M&Ms are delicious. Anyway, you know. you know, like New Jersey has Tootsie Roll Pops. I'm I'm, I'm down for that. Uh, oh. You know, Ohio, once in a blue moon, I'm good with it with a blow pop. Uh, you know, Who doesn't have a good blow. <laughs> no. mm. Mm. You know, um, I don't have an aversion to Swedish fish. I'd like someone that I know dearly and love to torture them with because they hate it. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm okay. Like Virginia loves Snickers. Mm. Uh, Snickers Hot tamales is in second. I would pass on that. Um, yeah, West West Virginia in, enjoys uh, uh, Hershey's mini bars just as much as Pennsylvania, apparently. Plus blow pops and Milky Way. So we're kind of like you know our own little triad there. There you um, go. North Carolina's got Reese cups, Snickers, and M and M's. I'm down for all that. I've you know frequented that state in the past. Yeah, so. Ooh, they like their you're, you're staying they're kind of in the China. eastern part of the U.S. and the northeastern. Well, I mean, I don't. There's. Let me take a look around. I don't think there's any states that I have to go to. Like the Dakotas, both like candy corn in some fashion. Passed. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just. Mm. Uh, Wyoming, their top rate is saltwater taffy. Passed. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's Wyoming. Passed. Like, well. Pass. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of like anybody that's got candy corn listed. I'm just probably not a fan. Um, <laughs> it's like, what is wrong with you? No, I just, you know, everyone's kind of regionally got their own like flavors of things that they're interested in. Um, yeah, I. The, a lot of this stuff is pretty popular. Like Louisiana is an outlier with the lemonhead thing. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Um, most so of the really other stuff is pretty like, like repetitive. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maine is Sour Patch Kids, too. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. like but, then got, but then they got candy corn. Like, mm -hmm. I think yeah, we can all good. agree. I was looking at the top. Corn. Yeah. Who, candy corn had its place it's a long time ago. A, candy corn and Necco wafers. Oh, Necco wafers. Come on. Uh, also known like as chalk. Oh, I'm so bad. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> I mean, it, to be fair, I did like uh, 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 Smarties. See, but that's different. <laughs> that's like uh, 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 compacted uh, uh, Kool-Aid powder. <laughs> it's, it's compacted pixie sticks. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a better better uh, description of it. Oh, anyway. Um, oh. to Owen, last before we sign off, uh, Owen said, "Don't y'all indulge in spicy Mexican candy." Um, no, because it's not popular where I am, like in my area. Mm -hmm. Not that I, I'm aware of. So, 
Um, I mean, I've seen scorpion lollipops. Um, and, you know, uh, pass on that. Like, mm. I'm not, you know, down for the insects in the <laughs> in my candy thing. Um, which isn't the same thing that Hasey is saying. But, yeah, like, no, that's not really kind of my... I, have, I haven't, uh, yeah, again, and I think you're kind of, I'm kind of the same way. I haven't actually seen spicy Mexican candy. But I will say, personally, I'm not a fan of a spicy candy. Like... Mm. Like I, if I want a candy, I want like a sweet, maybe, maybe like a little, like a little salty kind of thing. Like a, like a, like I said, my favorite is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I, I think I, I kind of like, like the creamies. Mm. Well, I mean, they're, they're still sweet, but the, the texture is creamy, which is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the um, uh, uh, Three Musketeers, the Milky Ways. Uh, do you like me a Snickers? I got a little crunch with the with the peanuts in there. Um, I, I like my stuff like I, even the um, types of from my favorite candy shop, Cross's Chocolates. Plug them, shout out, love them to death. Um, I usually get the creams, um, mm -hmm. which are are very tasty. So I, I like the the creamy and not necessarily as harsh of a. Or strong uh, of a uh, a crunch and a sweetness, because mm. okay. when you think about it, like uh, like if you look at like Skittles and Sour Patch Kids and um, uh, Double Bubble and even Starburst, they're all very very sweet. They're very sugary. Mm. Um, while all the chocolate bars, the like my favorite of the the Hershey's mini bars is the the special dark. Those aren't very sweet necessarily. They're very chocolatey, a little bit more bitter. And and like even as I said, my crush chocolates, the type of chocolate I prefer to get there is the, the dark chocolate. I prefer prefer that sort of thing over the strong sweetness of of anything else. Mm. I think as we uh finish up here i do want to recognize what owen posted which i think is funny uh, he said of course freaking hawaii would be skittles anytime y'all want to taste the rainbow brown chicken brown cow there's a rainbow boom, 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 boom. <laughs> anyways well I, I i think we've talked that to death everybody yeah, we're good. Uh, I think we covered a lot of things. Tell us what your favorite seasonable foods are here yourself. Uh, you can do plenty of that. Uh, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Leave a comment on a blog. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 will talk. It's 361-265-8255. You can reach us on various social media outlets over on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at comes out loud in the appropriate place of the url you can join our entourage chat and chat about it maybe have a debate those are fun. always fun and i'm not saying that sarcastically they are fun um and that's at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col to join that you can find out where we're going live by popping over to our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col uh, if you want to get some merchandise such as comes out loud uh logo shirt that that Damon is wearing, or it comes out loud hat. Sleeve. We're get, yeah. See, you, you, we have sweatshirts too, and such, such, um, or a hat like Gary has is wearing. Uh, you can do that over at zizzle.com slash comes out loud. Um, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud, or if you just want to uh, send us some cash to help give us some up upgrades and such, uh, we appreciate that very much. You can do that at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can rate us on Apple Podcasts or subscribe to us through Google uh, Play, um, although I think that's going to be YouTube. It's all confusing. Amazon, Spotify, um, that you can subscribe to all there. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box at box, puppy box, cup box, something or other. Uh, you can also find me on Sundays uh, playing some D&D at twitch.tv slash windgem. That's W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. 
Damon? Um, I am Theater Cup 79 and most bear related sites are on Facebook. Um, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GareBear73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody! Good night, everybody! Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>